Assalamu alaikum and greetings. My name is Shwa and I am the host and founder of a podcast called Light Up with Shwa. It's a weekly podcast on conscious living and parenting. I have a very special guest from Paris, Paris. Uh, she's sitting there and uh, thank you for uh, being online. So, Assalamu alaikum, uh, Nuria. Alaikum salam. Um, my okay. name is Nuria Garcia Masip. I'm originally from Spain and I'm based in Paris at the moment. And I'm a calligrapher um, and I have studied for the last 18 years with some of the great masters from the Ottoman calligraphic school, starting with Mohammed Zakiria in Washington, D.C., and later with his master, Hassan Chelevi mm. in Istanbul, and Daoud Bektash as well, who has become my main uh, master. MashaAllah, very nice. So, uh, I don't know if it's an obvious question, but it's like, why did you choose this or how did you get into this? Uh, can you talk about that a little before we move yes. on? Yes. So well, it's a bit of a, a long story, but I will give you the, the sort of <laughs> brief version. Uh, I, I always had an interest in the arts and in the visual arts. And I was searching um, from a young age for, for um, a path uh, in the visual arts, which was linked to the tradition and to the, to the sacred. Mm. And after a lot of research, um, I did most of my research in Morocco and so on after my university studies. Um, I, I, I met a self-taught calligrapher in Morocco who did not have a method and didn't have a master and so on, but sort of planted this seed uh, of calligraphy uh, and the love for calligraphy. And so it made me realize that I had to look for a master. Um, and that's how I came in touch with Mohammed Zakiria, who was really the door um, and the person who opened up this this path for me. So were you like a teenager? or I was, no, no, no. Well, I was practicing art when I was a, a teenager. So in, okay. In but the... but uh, but later, precisely because I couldn't find my 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 way in modern art, you know, which is very um, very much based on the sort of the subjective, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, beauty is relative, and there are no rules, and everything has to be a sort of contestation to the modern world. And I really couldn't find myself uh, there, so I actually left everything aside, put everything aside, and I did philosophy and uh, and literature at university. And that's where I met uh, Sayyid Hussein Nasser, who's oh. a great professor in yes. Washington. Yes. So he he told me, he said, Nuria, you're not obliged to put aside uh, art. You can also practice uh, sacred art. You, you know, there's still Islamic art, which, yes. you know, at that time now, when I see my students and different people that come to calligraphy, everybody is much more well-informed. But at that time, which was, you know, late 90s, mm -hmm. um, it wasn't so easy to know where can I learn the sacred art? Where can I go to learn Islamic art? That's why I went to Morocco trying to see, because being from Spain, that seemed to be sort of the, the, the logical place to start, you know, closer, more familiar. Mm. Um, and so I lived in the Medina for a year and I met, you know, I... I I wanted to to work with the, the mosaic work. So Medina, sorry. So I will I will make sure that I understand Medina in Mecca, Medina no, 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 or, no, no, or no, no, the no, city that, that, Medina. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Okay, okay. This is in Morocco. Okay, Morocco. The, the old city uh, of Fez. We call this the Medina. Ah, yes, any, any yes. Sort of old city. Yeah, sorry. Okay. I didn't yeah, say. I just want to make sure. So our listeners. Uh, do know can follow yes, you yes. because I want yes. to introduce this yes. uh, sacred art uh, yes. and I want to bring more series on it so I want to understand myself and also for my uh, listeners so sorry yes. uh, I might be interrupting you about uh, you I want you to explain that thank you yes, for yes. doing that so okay so you were uh, in uh, for a year in Morocco you said Yes, yes, no. So that's how I, I, I investigated different art forms. And that's where I met this uh, sort of self-taught calligrapher. And that's how I, I that's sort of the, 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 the sort of the first steps to find Towards. a traditional art mm -hmm. form, which led me to calligraphy. So you have been in that since then? Yes, yes. Okay. And this is what you do? Yes, yes. This is okay. my profession. Yes. Is there any other profession also? I'm just saying because uh, I no, want to no, see no. At the once. moment, well, of course, for many years, um, the the study of calligraphy takes many, many years. Mm. So uh, 
I mean, I didn't get my jazz and my calligraphy license um, until 2007. Mm. So meanwhile, obviously, I was doing different things. I was teaching languages. I was doing different jobs uh, to earn a living and to be able to study. But once mm. I received my jazza, uh, slowly I started. Uh, the jazza is the calligraphic diploma, yes, which gives you, yeah, which gives you the 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 permission to produce your own calligraphic work and mm. to sign it and to uh, to teach as well. So this is in English called professional author authorization from a from a master well, or is it um, what is it called? In uh, any, anyone who is um, uh, anyone who is familiar with Islamic sciences yes. knows that for any of the Islamic sciences, there is an ijaza. What yes. is the ijaza? It's like yes. so the sort of diploma mm -hmm. that says that you have learned uh, this, this uh, field and mm -hmm. that you can now teach. No, and, and there are individual ijazas that are given for a particular treatise, for a particular book, for a particular... So, you know, this is a much wider context. Mm. Calligraphy also has a system of ijazas, and this is also a diploma which links the master and the disciple, the student, to an initiatic chain of uh, transmission. Okay. So meaning, um, and traditionally, according to the tradition in calligrapher, the first, the first um, uh, figure, the first calligrapher in this initiatic chain is Sayyidina Ali. Mm -hmm. And okay. from there, there is a transmission from master to student, which of course has many different schools, many different branches. Mm. Um, to this day. So in the Ijaza, um, which in my website, there's an example. I can I can send it to you later if you want to illustrate. Yes, I will be putting your website uh, link in. But, but, the, but any of the traditional Ijazas was a, a reproduction of an old piece um, by a master. And then the, the teachers who have taught the student will sign uh, saying that they are the students of so-and-so and so this student that is able to produce pieces and so on and it's it's literally i, I did uh, see it but i will uh, sort of an initiation yeah. into the into the silsila into the chain of transmission okay. of of calligraphers okay. however it's important to note that everything i'm explaining today is very particular to the ottoman school of calligraphy okay. that there are many different schools of calligraphy and that not everything is the same everywhere you know, in the same way that the materials are not the same the calligraphy styles are not the same okay. Um, in certain parts of the Muslim world, um, like in Morocco or um, Sub-Saharan Africa or India or Malaysia, etc., this Ijaza tradition was, was very much broken. Um, and now it has been uh, sort of revived. You know? okay. And there are calligraphers who have gone and gotten their Ijazas from, from calligraphers, masters in, in, in Turkey or in Iran or in the Arab world, and they go back and they... And they transmit, but there there has been a sort of break in the transmission, which is uh, it's also important to nuance this, you know, mm. because there's not really one hard rule for everything, you know. Every culture has had different ways mm -hmm. of teaching it, and every context is different, um, and so on. <laughs> mm. Yep, that's good to know because I'm yep. learning about it too. That okay, there is a the initial style and the Turk Ottoman style. And yes, yes, of then course. Meeting some uh, really renowned uh, calligrapher in Pakistan, uh, I learned okay that is his also style. Then I have met yes. uh, Haji Noor. Haji uh, ha Yeah, yes. Nuruddin. So I have his work also, you know. So the yes. interest has been there. <laughs> yes, so, yes, yes. Of course, yeah. and for the Chinese tradition, precisely. Yes. There's also no Ijaza tradition. You know okay. the. the the, the students learn from imitation of the master. Okay. And I don't know if Haji Nuruddin has now decided to introduce ijazats in his system. I don't system, know. But, I don't know. But I mean, it's not part of the culture. Okay. I mean, it may be something that now now it's sort of become yeah. a little bit I should find out. So I, I, I should find out and uh, maybe put that yeah, in yeah. it. No, no. Yeah. And, and, and there are other places like in Iran where um, the ijazah is actually a national exam and they have different oh. exams and different levels and okay. it's extremely... There are a lot of benchmarks, which is it's very good. Very nice. uh, it's very professional. So you see, every every country mm -hmm. uh, does it in a different way. Right, so this right. is what is that's very nice. No, I appreciate your explaining it to <laughs> yeah. us. No, it's important because, as you said, it is uh, coming back. 
and not very many people know even muslims no, don't no, know about no, it exactly. so no, let alone so about non muslims <laughs> or westerners who are uh, really just admiring the artwork and they have no clue what's in there yes, you know yes of whether course. it's arabic or all so my next question would be that um do you have to know arabic to learn uh, this art No, no, no. I, I mean, I myself, I'm not. I, I'm not an um, Arabic speaker. I, okay. I've studied Arabic and I have mm-hmm. some some notions of Arabic, mm-hmm. but it's definitely oh, okay. um, not okay. not the. It's not a priority. Mm-hmm. And I have many students who who are from different countries and they okay. don't know Arabic. But mm-hmm. it's true that as you learn calligraphy, you do learn, you do learn obviously Arabic. how to read and how to right. write. And, oh, that's nice. That's but nice. you don't need to have a high level of, to do to begin with. No, 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 not okay. at all. Okay. And sometimes it's even an advantage, I think, because um, you come you come to calligraphy with a completely fresh um, start. You know, you, you see everything in an abstract way. You see the strokes, you don't see forms. Sometimes Ar- native Arabic speakers I've noticed here in Paris, I have a lot of um, students with an Algerian or a Moroccan background, mm-hmm. and they sometimes are a bit conditioned by the letters they've learned from when they were little, which have nothing to do with the particular style we might oh, be okay. studying because there are different styles mm-hmm. in calligraphy. So do you and think so they are slow? That they can are... Be a, no, sometimes oh. that, that can be a sort of mental blockage okay. because instead of doing the abstract stroke, they're reproducing what they know oh. to be this particular letter, you okay. see? So this depends, obviously. Yeah. Uh, well, I know Arabic also and Urdu also. <laughs> so I will yeah. have trouble... <laughs> No, one just has to come to calligraphy with a very blank sort of page. blank slate, yeah, you know, like, yeah. like anything. When yeah. you want to learn something unlearn, from the start. Unlearn and then learn, right? Exactly, yeah. okay. exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right, no, I really, no, that's, good. that's good, that's good. So do you teach online also or do you only teach on in um, person? Well, uh, obviously for calligraphy, the, the best way is to teach on yeah. in, in person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the traditional calligraphy, the, the traditional method to teach calligraphy is actually, uh, obviously, it's based on this master-student relationship. So um, the student has to teach, uh, has to choose the, the master. And then normally we see the master once a week or maximum twice a week. But then the practice is it's individual on your own. On your own. Mm-hmm. So even when I was in Istanbul or when I was in D.C. with Mohamed Zekiria, I would only see my teachers once a week. And the rest of the time it was a very sort of, intensive practice on my own and this is some something that students don't necessarily realize that the calligraphic uh, practice is a very lonely practice you spend a lot of time by yourself by yourself Mm -hmm. just repeating 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 and this is where you you learn obviously a lot about yourself you know you learn a lot of patience and perseverance and discipline and you need to have a sort of very steady stable practice it's exactly like studying a musical instrument you know, like studying the piano or, or the violin or something like that. It's just, it's really up to you to do it. So having said that, obviously the best thing is to see your teacher personally once a week in, in order to see other students as well and be a little bit more motivated and so on. But obviously sometimes it's not possible. So you can send your, your lesson to the, to the teacher and receive corrections. And this is what I do with some of my long distance students who who will prepare their mesh and the, the mesh is is the lesson the calligraphy lesson and send it to me and I and I scan it I sorry I print it I I correct it I scan the corrections and I send it back mm. but this is definitely not ideal you know because right. you need to see the hand of the master you need to see there's a lot of verbal feedback mm. that we give when the students are with us so is it so, possible that wherever so you are based in Paris or you're based in yes. Spain No, no, I'm based in Paris. I'm based okay. in Paris. As I mentioned, mm-hmm. um, if you want to find a teacher in calligraphy, first of all, you need to decide which school you want to learn. learn okay. No, So yeah. which type of scripts do you want to learn? And there are many different scripts. So, mm-hmm. for instance, in Pakistan, they're going to be teaching the sort of uh, Pakistani Nastalik. Nastalik, yes. Oh? Yes. which is very much inspired in the Persian school. So yes. somebody who's attracted by that script obviously should either find a teacher in Pakistan or in Iran, which Iran. there are some stylistic differences, but there are many, many, many different teachers teaching these different styles. Okay. If you want to learn, for instance, the Thuluth yes. and the Nesih style, obviously these styles are taught also in Pakistan or in, in, in Iran. 
But it is true that the Ottoman school had a strong predilection for these styles, and it's a very good place to study these scripts. You see, like, one doesn't take out the other, but, you know, there are certain places where they sort of specialize more in a certain script. Okay. If you want to learn the sort of Maghrebi script, then obviously you would go to Morocco mm-hmm. and find a teacher who teaches Maghrebi. Mm-hmm. However, um, you need to bear in mind that for calligraphy, it's completely linked to the geography of the Islamic world. The geography of the Islamic world is vast. We're talking from uh, sub-Saharan Africa and, and Andalusian Spain mm-hmm. to uh, Southeast Asia. Yes. Yeah, and we're talking about many, many, many centuries yes. of Islamic civilization. So it is so difficult to just say this is the one formula or this is okay. what you should do. You see, every region is going to be different. Every yes. region will have their particular script. Every region, and I want to emphasize this because uh, sometimes there's a sort of tendency to say, oh, no, 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 Istanbul is the best place or Tehran is the best mm. place or... And no, it really depends on the type of script you want to learn and the mm. type of discipline you want to learn. Some styles are very free, like the Chinese styles by mm-hmm. Hajin Rudin. It's yeah. a completely personal. Yeah. There's a, there's a very Chinese aesthetic, but it's a very personal, spontaneous creation. Mm-hmm. So all of these things, it's quite complex, you yes, see. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. Can one learn a couple of different styles or you do have to stick to one or so it is dependent nowadays, on... Yeah. This depends on the person, but okay. if you want to really master a okay. style, mm-hmm. you should, should start with one. one. <laughs> okay. All right. And normally we have calligraphers who specialize in maybe two or three. Okay. Um, it's rare to find someone who can write all the scripts all. at a high level. Okay. Or if at you find a, master a calligrapher level. who writes everything, mm. uh, you need to sort of doubt a little bit. Is it all at a, at yeah. a mastery level? Yeah. You see, yeah. it's normally they, they excel at a, at a certain number. And then they, they have a knowledge mm-hmm. of, of the so other. So your ones. style is, you, you, so have, I, I you teach and learn? Solos, solos, solos and Nasser. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Nasser. And Nasser. Okay. Yeah. All right. Solos and Nasser. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. So how can we teach this to our children? All right. So for children, um, depending on where you are. <laughs> Again, yeah. <laughs> so there are obviously... Uh, if if you're in Iran, the students learn calligraphy at school. You see? They do so learn. It's school? wonderful. Oh, yes, yes. that's, that's why that's class. why my question was like, I don't yes. think we had it when I was growing. I wish I was because I used to write. I'm not sure ayat. about Pakistan, but but I know in Iran for sure they they, they teach calligraphy mm. at school, um, and in different countries in the Muslim world they still teach calligraphy. Do they so teach in Turkey? That's a, in Turkey, no, because as you know, in Turkey, they changed the alphabet. So the the, the, the Arab uh, letters were banned for a long time. So it's not part of the official curriculum. However, um, there are many sort of calligraphy courses outside of the of the school. Okay. Of but the there is more course. availability compared to some other places. Yes, yes, yeah. obviously. Yeah. But, but it's more for adults. They don't really yeah. see it. I mean, yes. oh, okay. you have to remember as well that calligraphy... Um, Calligraphy is seen as a noble art, yeah? yeah? So it's not seen as a craft or yeah, something yes. that you can sort of do, um, again, especially in Turkey, because the alphabet was banned and there was this mm-hmm. transition. Um, they really paid a lot of attention to the preservation of the classical form. Mm-hmm. So I would say in Turkey, it's even more more seen as, as, as something that you practice in a very sort of conservative context. And more, at, you know, when, when you're young, obviously, mm-hmm. as a teenager, you can start, mm-hmm. no? But it's not something they do so much with children. Whereas okay. in other countries in the Arab world, many, many, there are many classes, you know, mm-hmm. sort of sort of initiation into, into calligraphy for, for, mm-hmm. for small children. And I think it's very good because they become aware, even if they Earlier, don't become professional know? calligraphers, yeah. they become aware of, um, of what um, the Quran what and feels the, about yeah, and... Yeah. Yes, not necessarily yeah. the Quran, but just of, of beautiful writing yeah. and the, the, the correct posture, the correct yeah. uh, way of writing the letters and, and uh, a respect for the written word. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so how do you talk about, like, let's say the student likes the master, mm-hmm. but the master doesn't like the student or some, for some <laughs> reason, for some reason, or can, or can master not say that? Or uh, whatever no, no, it is. No. Yeah? So traditionally, <laughs> traditionally the master will never. 
traditionally yeah, the I master <laughs> cannot reject a student. The master yeah. is, is accepts all students. Okay. In theory. But what happens is that the the way calligraphy is taught is so difficult and it's so based, it's very much um, as I mentioned earlier, you know, this sort of solid the practice, uh, very solitary practice mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. The way it is taught, um, every week they will write uh, the model lesson for the uh -huh. student and then the, the student goes home, they practice, they come back and they receive corrections. If the, if the lesson is not uh, correct, they will have to repeat this lesson. No? And sometimes you can repeat a lesson for months. Mm. No, I repeated my first lesson for eight months. And normally it's the first lesson, which is a prayer, Rabbi mm -hmm. Yassid. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, this, this repetition, in a sense, uh, is a way to, to discourage the students who are not very serious, ah. you know. So normally... Uh, uh, so you kind of gauge also who is serious or not, right? Well, you don't, you don't. You see it, you see it in practice. And if a student is not able to persevere and doesn't so have the discipline okay. to continue and is impatient and so on, they will basically trail off. The master doesn't, the okay. master is not personally involved with the student. Exactly. You see what I mean? It's not exactly. a question of liking or not right. liking. It's if it is meant to be, enough. if they are, exactly, yes, if they are ready for it's, the hard work. So, no, it's, yeah. it's basically, it's, I always tell myself, it's all about love, you know. If you really love something, you will do anything. 